Welcome, folks, to another episode of Warm Paints and Brown Envelopes. And tonight, I'm joined by John Conley. John, how are we doing? Yeah, very good, Mark. Um, pleased to be on. Hard act to no, follow after no. Ken O'Connor and his uh, bath antics last week. <laughs> uh, tough job, that one. John, thanks very much for coming on. Um, in terms of yourself, then, it seen last week's your first game back pre season, then, with Bam and Arl? Uh, we, last week was our first game uh, back at. Uh, for any park we played the week before yeah. in uh, against new buildings, so we played we played right. two games, um, just kind of get everybody kind of getting forty five and sixty minutes just to get get back into the swing of things. Very good. How did you just get on? All right. Uh, yeah, we you know we won the we won the two games, um, and uh, you know a lot of the, a lot of the lads got got minutes under their belt and everything, and typical kind of friendly games, you know, so. It'll take a while just to get get right back into the swing of things, like. Yeah, uh, and uh, well, I suppose we have no real idea ourselves when the the leagues are going to get back at all. So it's just play it by ear sort of thing, isn't it? Yeah, no, it is a bit. Uh, it's a bit strange playing. You know, you're back in, in training and and you're playing games, but you don't have any kind of idea of and when it, you're going to actually, you know, what you're what you're gearing towards or when you're gearing towards them. Um, so it is. It's it's not the ideal situation, but we, you understand that it's a it's a strange world that we're living in at the minute. But um, I don't. I personally don't understand why there's not uh, there hasn't been a start date given yet. You know, um, surely the guy they can give out a date and then say, look, this is the this is the date we're gonna aim towards. But everybody knows the situation we're in. We can. Things can change in the in the meantime, but at least give the clubs and the players and everybody a an idea of when they you know they're tra- what they're training for and playing games towards you know. Yeah, hundred percent. It's hard for to keep players motivated and things like that. If there's no real end goal for it, isn't it? It's a tough, tough job. So uh, just for yourself, then we'll we'll start basically um, going through the youth football and things like that for yourself. Then where did it all begin? Um, and we. Were you always a goalkeeper, or how did that get lumped about? The, the, the goalkeeping thing came out kind of. I went around. I was around in the the local playground one day, and uh, all the all the bigger lads were playing on the pitch. And the only way I could get get on the pitch to play was if I got in goal. Um, right. So I got in goal, and I don't know whether I was I was good or whether you know. I think it was just a case more of the ball hit me. Um, right. And for some strange reason, I enjoyed that, and that was it. Then I stuck, I stuck the playing and goal. Um, so yeah, I've got the got the older lads in the area to thank for that. Okay. And in terms of yourself, your football ways then was it just always playing in the street, or did you have to you on the team or anything like that? Yeah, no, I went to, from kind of under under eight, under nines. I played for one of the the, the local clubs um, called Sheriff. Uh, there's a place just across from where I lived called Sheriff Street and they had a, a team called obviously called Sheriff and that's where I started off and uh, stayed there for a couple of years and then moved on then it's kind of I think as you kind of progress a little bit to a, a schoolboy club called um, St Kevin's Boys who are renowned in, in Dublin for uh, the amount of players they produce through the years so it's, that's where I stayed in all my schoolboy football mm-hmm. Grant, and in terms for St Kevin's and that, did you ever get any like of trials across the water or anything? Or no, there was always kind of there was always kind of talk of it and that, but no, I never I never went to yeah. then, No, um, I think I think at that age as well, I think and looking going back on it more so than what it is now was a lot a lot about uh, size and height and everything, and you know I, I was never I was never the biggest, so um, that I think that played a part in it as well, like. Yeah, uh, I was doing just when I was looking through you things and that there. Then you played with a fell from your man from Westlife. Then he was goalkeeper with you. Is that right? Yeah, he was. He was. Uh, he was a year younger than me at, at Kevin's for a good bit. Yeah, so we would have played it, played the odd game, and obviously mm-hmm. you know would have been up watching the games and whatever. I'd have seen him playing and trained a couple of times with him and that, and um, 
I've met him. I've met him a few times since uh, since he's been in with. And to be fair to him as well, he never he never changed at all. He was still the same kind of same down the air kind of fella. Yeah, very good. And um, terms of yourself, then at that age, then what age were you starting to get into like the senior end of football? Then was it always down Dublin then, or did you get progression on from other Irish or League Ireland clubs or anything like that? Uh, well, I was when I left Kevin's, I was eighteen, um, and I went to I went to Bohemians. Um, mm-hmm. Never, never played in the never played in the force. I was on the on the bench a couple of times for the force team and that, but. For me, it was a it was a, it was an amazing experience because I, I, I would have went the daily amount to watch Bowles play. Um, me 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 dad played for Bowles and that, and it was a it kind of everybody in the everybody in the family kind of supported him and that, and I would have went the daily amount all the time. So whenever I got the opportunity to go, I never even I never really thought about it. I just went and just jumped at it, you know. But it was great. It was a great experience for me because I was training with. Uh, one of the one of the all time great league of Ireland goalkeepers, a guy called Dave Henderson. Um, he you know training with him and all that was was brilliant at that time, and um, it was it was a, it was a great experience for me. Even being being on the bench a couple of times because the the, the manager was a, a league of Ireland legend as well, and in, in Torlego Corner. So just having that experience at that that age was brilliant though, because I remember I remember I always got it was. Wasn't always involved and all, but I was always I would always make make myself you know available to go up and and kind of learning around them at yeah. first team games and everything and and that kind of stuff you know and and it's it's been great for me always looking back on that and and having that kind of to fall back on and, and learning and everything from that. Yeah, so it's for keepers. It, it must be a tough skill for you when you're young trying to break into. A senior setup or that, so will them get like the the senior keeper you're saying you're working with for the good guys to work with or get constantly giving you advice and things like that then to keep your head at it or yeah no well I can only I can only speak kind of from that with with Dave Henderson he was he was brilliant um mm-hmm. I think it's I think it's then and now it's a, it's a lot different clubs kind of now will will take a chance on a young goalkeeper. Whereas yeah. a, a good few years ago it was always no no he's too young he's always going with the experience and um but now now clubs I think take a take a chance more on goal because it's the only way that the goalkeepers are going to progress and and get that experience that they need is by playing games and and learning from mistakes and everything. Mm-hmm. No, hundred percent. Um, terms for yourself then, Bohemians or that then? Where did you move to after that to get sort of into senior football then? Uh, it, it was a strange one for me because it was uh, a fella that used to live around the corner from me in, in, in East Wall, uh, where I'm from. A, a guy called Johnny McDonnell, uh, great great centre half in his time for you know Pats and what have you. And then he came up and was uh, at Newry. Um, right. Okay. And uh, it's strange the way the whole thing p- pans out because it was the it was the late great Paul Strani broke his leg, um, and they were. They were struggling for a goalkeeper, and at that stage, I was I was I was a free agent. I had kind of stepped back away a little bit, um, and Johnny came around to the house and said, "Me, look, we're struggling for a goalkeeper. We need somebody. Would you be interested in coming up?" And at that, it was the it was I think it was the last game of the season, and they needed the mm-hmm. they needed to win it um, to get to qualify for Europe and what have you. And I said, "Yeah, no, no, no problem." So they got the special dispensation to sign a goalkeeper, and I came up and. It was actually against Cliftonville at, at Solitude, and, and we we managed to win the game two 0 um, and qualify for Europe. And that was it. Then I signed with Newry after that, um, yeah. and went away. And it was only I was only nineteen or something, and was away. Play, I didn't play in the, in the European games that followed the following next season. Um, again, another experienced goalkeeper, Kevin McKeown, was the, was the what brought he played in the European games. But for me. Again, it was a great learning curve working under him um, and being on the bench then in, in in European games as well at that you know at, at that age. Yeah. So, see, in terms of that, were you travelling up and down? Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah, we were travelling up and down at that stage. There was yeah. Gee, there was myself, Johnny McDonald, uh, Mark Rutherford, uh, yeah. Dean Fitzgerald. Um, so there was a few was uh, you know travelling up and down together. So it was grand that way as well. Yeah. Um, in terms of then for Newry City to the Irish League, how did you find adapting then to the Irish League itself? Different um, to what you experienced already? Or? 
Oh, it was it was a big it was a big step up for me because I, I hadn't played that many that many games before I uh, before mm-hmm. I came up come up here. Um, so it, it was a it was a big step up, but the the beginning of it going away in Europe and everything was a was a great great way of getting to know all the lads and everything. And um, as I said, we had a, a Kevin McKeown that was there as well, and he was a he was a, a top goalkeeper in Wolgunder and everything, and and learned quite a bit from him as well. So. It was good in that way. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Previous, like, last week, we were saying, Kieran was saying like the trip to, in Europe helped bond him and with the team sort of thing. Was that the same with yourselves? It just sort of breaks the ice for the whole lads then and settles yeah, you down def- to go on through the season? Yeah, definitely, because you're away then. You're away for a couple of days and as you know, you, you don't really get that that much time in the, in the early day to spend with, with, with your teammates and everything. Um, it's not like the, you know, the, the English game where they're away maybe for training camps and everything like that. So the European the European experience is, is great like that for um getting everybody, especially if there's new players coming in, letting them let them get to know everybody and uh stuff like that and training together as well. And maybe you know you might be training the day before the game and everything, two days prior to and all that kind of stuff. So it does it does help get everybody settled down and then um, it gives the, it gives that team quite a quite an advantage going into the league as well that they've had that little bit extra training under their belts as well. Yeah, and um, turns out as well, good side of bonded things, a few drinks and things they got there after your game. Then I take it. Um, there definitely was that them European trips with Newry. Um, like <laughs> you can, it was a uh, quite a lot actually. Yeah, um, they had a, yeah. they had a, a squad full of experienced players, so it was quite a kind of. Uh, again, a learning curve for you when you're out when you're out with them on a night out and what have you. Kind of, you kind of standing back watching them and, um, but yeah, now it was a few good nights out in Europe as well. Yeah, uh-huh, definitely. And it, how long did you stay at Newry then for, John? I think I, I think it was two, I think I stayed there for two seasons. Um, mm-hmm. and I got a move then to to Derry City. Um, okay. that came about then. I, was one of the ones where I was like, right, I can get a chance of back back playing in the League of Ireland, um, yeah. and uh, lo- loved it up there. I loved that. Loved I loved the place. I loved Derry as a as a city and everything, and uh, yeah. the, the the fan base that they have up there. You know, every it's it's all about Derry City. And um, everywhere you yeah. went in the in the city, everybody would everybody would be stopping you and talking to you about about the club and about the games and everything, and um, it was brilliant. But quite, kind of towards the end of the season, I got a I got a bad injury in that, which has happened a, happened a few times for me. Um, and I kind of, I was due to due to sign a new contract. And um, when I was out injured, they, you know, understandable, they had to bring in another goalkeeper. And eventually he done really well and he ended up signing the contract. But um, for me, it worked out well as well because I got I got a move across to, to Institute then. Oh, okay. Who was that? Was that under Paul Key or? Under, yeah, Keys was signing me, yeah. Yeah. Um, and what, unfortunately, now again, I didn't get to play on the keys for that for that long. He had, uh, he went to um, Carlisle when whenever Roddy Collins and that had yeah. gone, he went um, he went over there. So. Went over, didn't they? Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, um, then Paul and John they used to coach me as a kid at New City and things like that. Two great, great coaches and two two great yeah. people as well. Um, I met them. I only met them there on. On uh, Saturday at a game, they're they involved obviously with Maiden City, um, so it was great. It was great seeing them on on Saturday there as well because they are two uh, brilliant coaches and, as I said, two uh, two really good people. Yeah, was that move then? Were they playing Irish League at that stage or were they in the championship? They had just they, well? they had just got promoted, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So it was the it was all, you know into the Premier League and what have you. So it was great. It was that the the fourth season, and I think we. Surprised everybody that year. You know, we finished there. Uh, we finished in the top six. Um, mm. We won the we won the North West yeah. Cup against a really good Almond side. We beat them, beat them five 0 in the cup final, which nobody really expected. Um, beat Linfield a few times on uh, in that 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 campaign as well. So it was a really good start. Yeah, it was Rand Semple in that team. Sam's yeah, brilliant really good player, aren't they? Uh, yeah, he great is, player, he great fella coaches, as well. Yeah. I used to. I used to stay with Sims. Yeah. When I was up there, nah, um, I would have went up. I would have travelled up, maybe stayed from Thursday through to after the game on Saturday or Sunday or whatever. And I, 
I stayed with I stayed with uh, with Sam Sam. Seen him actually seen him two weeks ago there at the he was up watching the New Buildings game. Um <laughs> but yeah, no, Sam's a top man. Disappointed yeah, he picked a, he picked a team of his career there a couple of weeks ago and only put me on the bench. I wasn't <laughs> happy with that. But he put in, see, he, put in he put in a lad that was at uh, Peterborough, so I can't really argue, you know. Uh, <laughs> what uh, then? What happened after Institute? Then did you go back to Ligue Ireland, or was that when they moved to? That was that happened. That was the move then to to Cliftonville. Um, right. Uh, and who brought you in there? It was Eddie Patterson. Right. Um, I was on. I was. I was actually. I was away. I was on. I was on holidays and down in the, down in the, down in the caravan in Wexford. Um, when I got a, I got a, a phone call from Jared Lawler asking me would I be interested in that, and you know that the, the words would I be interested for me going to Cliverton? Well, I was. I just. I kind of put the phone down and laughed a little bit. I was like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Um, yeah. And uh, so that was that was that was the start of that then. Um, mm-hmm. And again, I got I got the goal there, and I got the walk with uh, with Strani again, which was brilliant. Um, mm-hmm. uh, that first pre-season that I was there, Strani had been at Cliftonville for a number of years and was was adored by the fans and everything. So I knew I knew I was going there, and it was going to be a going to be a tough challenge for me and everything. And uh, but I have to say, Strani in that first pre-season was was brilliant with me, and uh, we worked really well together. Um, and lucky enough for me, I, I you know I got the I got the nod at the start of that season, and uh, I didn't look back then. I, I you know I kept my place for whatever it was, seven and a half years or whatever. Yeah, that's it. Eight seasons or so you'd spent there. Um, yeah. Quite a, well, there's a list of achievements when I was going through them and looking at them. Just so your first keeper to keep a clean sheet in Europe. So in terms of was it a different experience from going to Europe with New York City, to Cliftonville, or was it similar idea again? Or um, I, I can't really, I can't really remember the. I think it was, it was, it was, it would have been similar. Um, obviously, you know, I. Again, going back to when when we when we got into Europe that that first year when we drew the the team from Latvia, I don't even think I don't think t- I don't think people gave us a chance even in that. Um, yeah. Whereas now I think I think clubs get get a bit more you know bigged up to go a result in Europe. Um, but for mm-hmm. us, we we believe we could, especially when we got drawn against the the, the team from Latvia, we we were confident in that um, and. Uh, the whole, I think the, the home game was a was a draw, but I think I played the, the, the I think I played I don't know it was a ten or twelve games in Europe for Cliftonville, but never actually played at Solitude. Um, right. Never played at Solitude in Europe for them because it was being it was being redeveloped and everything at that time. Yeah. And we the fourth year we played that Latvian team at Windsor, mm-hmm. um, and then I think we played another game. Another, another few games we played at Windsor. We played a couple of games at Mornview. Well, I never got to actually play a European game at Solitude. Um, yeah. But as I said, going back to the Latvian, when we were we were we were confident we could get a result. Um, but I think I still think even after the one all draw at home, I don't think too many people gave us a chance going out there. Um, mm-hmm. But we done everything right. The, the club the club were great. They took us out. We went. We didn't go out the day before. We were out a couple of days before the game and. Um, trying and everything, and trying the day before. Everybody trains the day before, the night before, or whatever. But we we were out and we trained two days before the game and got you know got acclimatized. The, the weather was, yeah. was really hot, but lucky enough for us on the on the day of the game, it was like you were playing in, in Belfast. It was lashing rain and everything, so that kind of that kind of suited us a little bit. <laughs> yeah, um, that's very good. Yeah, uh, turn that, to that, sorry, go ahead, man. That, that that was the that was the first clean sheet then that that I kept was out in out in, out in Latvia and that was it that was something that not the clean sheets part of it but the more so what happened after the game and see I I, I didn't think there would be anybody from Cliftonville out there supporting us you know um, mm-hmm. but when we got there obviously there was a there was a great support and, and to see to see what it meant to them after the game and the likes of uh, you know. Uh, Freddie Jardine, absolute legend at Cliftonville, and you see him and 
he's on the pitch and tears and Jim Boyce and everything. And you see the, the likes of them people that had been at the club for so long. And um, that meant more to you than the actual, you know, the clean sheet or the yeah whatever else, you know, the, the self kind of praise and what have you. But to see that, see those people was, and what it meant to them was, was brilliant. Mm -hmm. And in terms for that night then, was a bit of a celebration or anything that night then with all the fans that rang together that did travel out or? Yeah, we had that, that was one of the, the funniest things I had seen. I was, uh, I was back on the bus and I was, we had got some food after, for after the game. I was sitting eating and I looked out the window of the bus and I could see, I could see, I think it was Liam Fleming, the captain, pushing a trolley up the road and the trolley was literally full of drink and beer. Any, any drink, <laughs> I think he, was, he, he left the off license um, and as he was pushing it across the, the, the road to the bus, the little woman come down and pulled the shutter down. And um, that was her. I don't think she opened up for the rest of that year. That was our money made. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Also, then, in terms for, sorry, that same one, is this the maniac bus driver that Kieran was talking about then last week? Well, the, the, the bus job, we had to go back to, from where we played, we had to go back to Riga. Yeah. And I think it was like, I don't know whether it was like three or four hour journey. So you can imagine what that bus, with that amount of drink that was on the bus, you can imagine what, <laughs> What the bus journey journey was like, you know, it's probably the best best bus journey I've ever been on. Anyway, um, but yeah, the 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 driver they're not like bus drivers over here, like. No, <laughs> going two ways. But uh, turns for also at Clevenville, then we're just taking a few bits and pieces out of you. You won free county on them shields. Then what was it like in terms of was that your you said about the Northwest Cup there? Was that your first uh, like trophy as such or major trophies then within the yeah, because I think I think when we won the the county Antrim Shield that time, I don't think Clipton had won a trophy for a, a number of years, and they hadn't won the county Antrim Shield for um, X amount of years as well. And and the I'll always remember it was at the Oval. The the mm -hmm. support that came out that night was was unbelievable. Um, uh, after the after the game, that was that was a proper party back at um, back at Solitude in the in the clubhouse. Um, it was it was brilliant. It meant meant an awful lot to a lot of people and and an yeah. awful lot to me as well to be able to win your your first medal at the club. Uh -huh. The team that Eddie did assemble, you ran the league right and close. It was just a couple of games towards the end. He's tailed off, but top and top up until around March time, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. When you look back at it, and I think we had a we had we 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 meet up and we have. We're still we're still all together in a WhatsApp group and we we meet up every now and again and and we will all we we, we say you know we should have that year we finished second we we should have went on and won it um yeah but Linfield had a had a great squad and all the experience of winning winning league titles and everything and you know obviously that uh, it came through and, and showed with them at the end of that season but look you look back at it with. With Eddie Patterson and all, he he done a he done a fantastic job at, at Cliftonville. Yeah, what was he like to work with? Um, mad hyper. Yeah, uh, took control of control of everything. You know, you you see managers and 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 they might stand back it and kind of watch training and uh, maybe not even be out at the training ground. Might be in the in the office or whatever. And uh, Eddie took Eddie took everything. Eddie was taking all the training sessions and. Um, basically, basically was doing everything. But I personally, I don't think he got um, or gets enough credit for the job that he actually done at Cliftonville. You no, know, yeah. He, I, he, the, the season that the season that I signed, they had just been in a relegation playoff. Um, and I think then when I signed, that was his first full season. He, he got us, got them qualified for Europe, um, and basically was qualifying for Europe nearly every year under him. Um, so for for me, he done a he done a he done a fantastic job there. And personally, I, every, everybody I'll tell you, they, everybody had their had their arguments with him and what have you, um, because of the way he was, because he but it was because he cared so much and he wanted the Clifton to do to do really well. Um, but for me, he got the best out of me. He knew how to get the best out of me. Um, and as I said, I I think he done a he done a fantastic job there. 
Yeah, no, definitely. He seemed to have turned the tide as such for Clippenville, didn't they? And started setting the stones in for Tommy Breslin to come in. Um, turn to yourself as well. You said the disappointment then in the Irish Cup. Yeah. Just around, around that, what was the... Obviously going in, you probably would have been confident enough. But being in North Belfast Derby and then losing it, what was it like after or during the game? Just to not do yourselves justice or what? Um, I, no, I don't. I don't think we did because that you know that team and that that season we were we were playing really well. But uh, the cup final itself, I think you know we could have been we could have been still there today. We, we, you just knew we were never going to score. You know, with mm-hmm. remember remember Gary Smith sliced the clearance from just outside the around the 18 yard box and went over the keeper and hit the crossbar and you just you just kind of knew then it was going to be it was going to be one of those days you know um, yeah we were going into obviously yeah, we were really confident that we we could win it um, but you know as I said it was just it was just one of those days we were we were never going to score like, and yeah, it, yeah. it was heartbreaking to lose a, to lose a cup final but to lose it in a in a North Belfast derby is was even harder to take then as well. Yeah. And um, terms for yourselves then, who who be the characters then that picks you up from that, gets you going for next year then in the change room? Is it all you just to get together or um no well the the, the the one the one thing there there was plenty of plenty of characters and well characters is characters is a good word to use when there's plenty of head cases really. <laughs> um, so you know once you went back into pre-season, it was lively and, and everybody was bubbly again and, and looking forward to the new season. Uh, you know, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to finish a season when you lose a cup final because you, you just want to get back at it straight away. Um, so again, I, th- I think we qualified by Europe anyway, should have a league position. So I meant we were back in quite early for pre-season, so that helped. Um, but as I said, there was a lot, of, a lot of good characters around the dressing room that, you know, Everybody, everybody was picked back up and, and ready to go again. A good goal in a good game. Yourself as well. You're probably one of the very few Irish League goalkeepers to score. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> what happened there? I, I, I don't. Know. I don't. I, I don't tend to talk about that too much. Um, not that. Well, Alan Blaney tells me I do, but I, I, I don't. <laughs> um, <laughs> now we 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 had gone through a gone through a rough patch with penalties and missing penalties and. Um, I said to Eddie, kind of, Gavin, we got we got another penalty, I'm taking it, and he kind of, I think he kind of just kind of laughed and agreed with me. He says, yeah, kind of joking about, it. but we uh-huh. playing Linfield and um, we we got a penalty, and um, I don't think he had any choice. I think when he noticed I was on the halfway line, already running up towards the, to get the ball, and um, yeah, I was kind of it was it was Linfield that solitude at the at the shed end, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a complete miss hit as well. By the way, I, I had a I had a plan to go to go, and do you know what? It was a good job I did miss hit it because he uh, he went the way that I was I was planning on going. So it was a good job I miss hit it and I went in the other corner. <laughs> and then I didn't I didn't I didn't know what to do then either. It was the ball came back at me and I just whacked the ball back in the net and it came back out again. I done it again and next of all, of all people that you want jumping on your back. It was Kieran O'Connor. I couldn't get him off. I was saying, right, I've got to get back down the other end here. Um, but yeah, no, see, when you're, see when you're running up, is there any thoughts going through your head or anything or are you just beeline just to the penalty? Or? No, I was no, I was just trying to get to the ball as quick as I could before so nobody <laughs> before else could that, but... um, Or so if he, well. couldn't sh- if he couldn't shout on and say, no, I don't let him take it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but just all... Just relief that when I went in, I was like, if now the last thing I wanted to do was be trying to run back down that far end if they if they were breaking, you know. Yeah, plus the abuse should be getting from the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, then after that, did you retire from penalties or did they keep you on them for a bit? No, I only took the one. That was it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I took the. I don't know. I'm not sure if we got one then for. I think it might have been a. A good while after that, so I was just kind of nearly kind of forgot about them that I didn't take in the previous one. But um, no, I never, never took another one. Hundred percent record, sure. That's all you. That's, need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And then, in terms of Clevenville, then obviously 
you hold the club very fondly, I would say, still even listen to you speak about them, you can still see fond, fond memories there. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, the the team for me as well was kind of growing up in in, uh, in Dublin. I, as I said, I, I supported Bohemians. They were my team, but you would have had a an interest in what was going on in the in, in the league up here and what have you. And, and obviously then at that stage, you would have I would have taken a notice of, of what Cliftonville were doing and everything. And there was a lot of a lot of lads from Dublin at that time as well, kind of all playing for Cliftonville and everything. And when they won the league and in ninety yeah. eight there was a few lads from Dublin and that were playing. So always had a always had a an interest in in them and then obviously spending spending the eight years um the club well, once you once you sign with the club the, the club's part of you to be honest with you. Yeah. Oh, and in terms of you did end you did end up going and then you went to Glenavon. Yeah. How did that how did that one come about? Well that that just I I, my contract expired at Cliftonville. I knew I knew at that stage myself that it was it was time for me to move on. Um uh, and I just I, I spoke to Gary Hamilton and I, I said to him, Look, the contract's up, can I, I want I need somewhere to try and just all yeah. I was looking at that stage was just look, I've got to come in and try and what have you and, and he was brilliant he says to me, Yeah, not a problem at all, come in and um, for pre season. Um and I went in and, and the first night I was there um, trying away, trying with the goalkeeping coach, and, and and he came up to me after the training. He said, "Look, I'd be interested to in bring you in if you if you'd be interested." And and that, and I says, "Well, I says I'd only I'd only plan just coming in just to keep myself ticking over and get me get me fitness levels up and what have you." And he said, "Look, I'm interested in bringing you in. Would you would you think about it?" So I says, "Right, okay, I'll get back to you at the at the weekend or whatever it was." And um, that was it. Then I I, I said, "Yeah." It was him and uh, Paul Miller. Wendy, Wendy rang me and he said, "Look, he's he's keen on bringing you in and what have you. Um, you know, it, it could work out well for you." And I said, "Right, that's fair enough." And and that was it then. But unfortunately for me, I I, I, uh, I broke my leg that season, so it was kind yeah. of a kind of a bit of a bit of a nightmare. Yeah. Term just um, going on Wendy Miller. In terms of he's another, as you would probably say, character. What was he like? Him and Gary both of them did. Oh, Talking to you sort of finger. Yeah, no, they were they, they they were brilliant together. To be fair to them, yeah. Um, you know, Gary Gary's a very uh, everybody. I think everybody knows Gary's a very very intelligent man in terms of you know the football and that. He, you know, when he yeah. when he speaks, you you sit you sit and you listen and, and take everything in. And when he's obviously when they when they played and played in England and what have you and played uh, for the big two and. And obviously was successful as well as a as a manager at Glentorn. Um so he's an, an awful lot of experience there as well. And he's a great, great motivator. Um, you know, getting you ready for games and, and getting the best out of you. Um so they they were a really good, really good combination and, and I think it proved that at Glenavon what they what they done there together, you know, getting Glenavon winning cups and, and getting them to Europe and everything and, and that. So I think the two of them were, were really good together. Yeah, good match. Uh, it was that year that you had you broke your leg that you won the Irish Cup, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. In terms for yourself around the, the leg break, things like that, was that tough to, to get over in terms of get back playing or were you was this basically an operations or anything like that or how did it come about? Um no I did. I was in the in the cast for like I don't know, was it eight weeks or something like that and then it's obviously all the all the rehab and, and, and trying to trying to build it back up and everything and it's it can was there ever a sniff of getting to the Irish Cup at all or what was that was there ever a sniff of getting back for the Irish Cup or anything like that or was oh, it no, no. Never, and, and never to be done. honest I, I know even though I was there as a as a Glen, I didn't I never really felt part of the Irish Cup because I, I broke it prior to the, the Irish Cup even starting that season so it right. wasn't a case of I played you know, a couple of games in the Irish Cup and then missed out and I hadn't played in it. So I didn't I didn't feel like I kinda you know, obviously I missed out, but I didn't feel like I, you know, played any really any part in it or anything like that. But to be fair yeah. to them as well, to be fair to, to Gary and the club and everything, they you know, uh, one of the directors arrived at my house with the with the cup final suit and everything and I, I, was, I was obviously part of it the part of the day. Um, yeah. you know, brought in and in terms of that morning and everything and we were you know, in, in for the pre-match meal and in around the changing room and 
I'm more happy and obviously out on the pitch then whenever they when they, whenever they won it. But I didn't do it. I didn't do a John Terry and go and get the kit on and celebrate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but that was it was it was it was fantastic for them and it was great to be there to see them to see them winning the cup and that you know. Yeah, so I think I remember around the time of it there was a bit of a dilemma for them who they were going to get to do next, wasn't it? Because I think someone else got injured or suspended or that. Yes, Andy, and Andy out. got sent off or something, and he was yeah. suspended and, and that. So they were kind of they were actually you know didn't know where they were going to get. Well, you know, we yeah. always find someone, but they didn't know didn't there was no standout kind of candidates really at that time to come in. Um, yeah. But again, Gary Gary pulled it out of the bag and got uh, James McGrath, and he done really well for them, helped them win the cup. Gary does seem to pull out a few signings from somewhere, like he gets like say your man Guy Bates and that too, the sort of ones that go under the radar, and it just seemed to work for him, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. I think he's got a he's got a, a, a good scout network down south as well. For me, always seems to be able yeah. to bring up a few boys in the from the south, and and you know maybe not have been playing. At a, the the League of Ireland level or whatever, and um, will come yeah. up and do, do really well for him. Mm-hmm. And in terms of yourself, then did you stay on the Glenavon the year after then, or where did you, what did you do from there? No, I what went to. Recovered? I went to learn. Um, right. Big Davy McAlinden, obviously an ex an ex teammate and everything. Oh uh, yeah, okay. with me, um, got in touch with me, and I didn't. I was, you know, I was what. I was, I don't know what age it was, it was 28, 29, whatever. Um, so I didn't know what I was going to, what I was doing or what I was going to do anything really. Um, mm-hmm. They said, look, just come in and, and give it a go. And to be fair, no way, any time I've got an injury, you know, I'll do everything I can to get myself back as fit as I can and as quick as I can. Um, and again, I got, me, I got myself back put in, I think, two months Quicker than what they had, what they had told me I would be, and um, went in went in with Davy, really enjoyed it. Um, it was my first time playing in the championship. Um, yeah. Had a had a great time. With people at Larne really looked after me and that. And um, come towards the end of that season, I had I had actually it's the first time I've ever done it, and it'd be the last time I'd ever ever do it. I had signed a, I'd signed a new deal and everything for the for the following season. Um, but then personal circumstances and stuff like that with, with family and everything, and you know, there's a few things happened. And I just said to Dave, I said, Look, I can't, I can't, I can't do any of the traveling anymore up and down. And um, I need to get, I need to get somewhere closer to home. And he, he, he asked me, He said, Look, just come in on Saturday and, and play the games and everything. And I said, To be honest with you, that wouldn't, that wouldn't sit right with me. I wouldn't like to be in a dressing room where a player was just coming in and playing. and not training and all that, so I said, "No, look, that's not that's not me. I need to be I need to be training and what have you." And um, that was when I, I you know I signed for Armagh City then. Yeah. yeah J- just on that, Lauren team was that there with Mark Pickin and Stuart King and things like that then. Stuart King was there. I tell you what, it, it was a pleasure getting to know Stuart King. I only I only ever played against him, but what a great person he is. And I yeah. Never any any converse, I was always ended up laughing. Such a such a funny fella, like a brilliant fella, and, and keep in touch with him now as, as we are, you know, send the odd text and what have you. Really, really good guy. Yeah, I, I had him on here as one of the guests too. He was a great guy to speak to, like he just seemed to just chill, chilled out but funny with it, like too. Yeah, no, brilliant because as I said, I'd only I'd only ever you know played against him and they usually play for Linfield. I was like, we didn't really, I wouldn't have had any kind of um, like dealings with each other or such. Yeah, um, but that 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 season at Larham was was brilliant. And um, what yeah, a player yeah. as well. What a left. Yeah. Uh, so you went to Armagh City then. Um, terms of you get decent enough cup run then. You could end up getting Glenavon. Basically, isn't it? Yeah. What a, what a game that was. Bit of drama um, around that one, wasn't there? Yeah, just a little bit, yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we, you know what? We had a, we had a really good squad. I um, had actually we finished third in the championship and everything, and and uh, way way above what they wanted to do and what have you. And then 
uh, the cup run, but the yeah, the, the controversy over that game was uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll smile and laugh about it now, but it was a smile and laugh about it the other day. That's that's for sure. Uh, I was looking at bits and pieces on it. I was going, nah, you, you, you know, you're you know, entitled the, to have your your pop like, weren't you? Oh, the, the the funniest thing about it as well was there, there was people saying that I should have had my two hands on the ball, and you're like, that's not even, it's not even a rule. And that was I was getting more frustrated listening and hearing people talk about that. I was, you know, but it is what it is. What can you do about it? You know. Uh, did the referees or anything after that? Oh, you apologise. It makes it worse, doesn't it? Apologise that coming out for the start of the second half. He had yeah, seen it on. Me. He'd seen it on the on the on the telly in the in the chat. He went in and seen it on the BBC, and came out and said, "Look, I, you know, I got I got it wrong. I was like, it's not good to me now." No, nah, that would nearly make it worse for me. Like. Yeah. <laughs> but um, Tony, he's done right and well against him. He's ran them close until really that goal went in, wasn't it? Yeah, no, the, the, he scored a he scored a penalty late on only as well. We were yeah. we were well in that game. Like as I said, we had a Amar wouldn't have really got the recognition and and the publicity that you know other clubs would have got. But we had a we had a really good squad there. And it was just yeah, unfortunate yeah. that they couldn't they couldn't keep them together to really have a good go at, at trying to get promoted. Um, other club, other other championship club came in and and were offering lads. Things that you know, I just couldn't, couldn't yeah. do. Because I know, like with my club at Chimney Corner, we had played them Championship two, and they were very, very good that year. They had, but they were all young, younger lads. So fella, I don't know if he still played that. Um, old Tan Lennon, centre back. Yeah. He's very, he's, yeah, he's very good. And then Stephen Murray was up front. Yeah. Can't get near him in the Championship two. You're like, near hanging on his back to try and stop him. Yeah, no, they, 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 there was a lot of a lot of, lot of other players that were there that was very good as well. You know, yeah, we uh, like Andy Howie that's at Lock Gall now. Mm. That year at Armagh, he was he was he was frightening. Uh, Philly Donnelly, another technically good footballer. Um, still, there was a, a lot of good players at the place, um, and I've a lot of a lot a lot of fond memories at, at Armagh um, because of the. The, the situation I ended up in there, with, you know, it was just after my mad passed and I was, I was looking after my dad and I was able, because it was so close to me, I was able to bring my dad to all the games and, and everybody at Armour looked after my dad great. He was able to sit up and up in the, up in the viewing lounge and watch all the games and everything. And we won the, oh, we won the Bob, the Bob Radcliffe mm-hmm. against Lock Gall. Um, again, not a not a trophy that a lot of the bigger clubs would look at, but for Armagh that was a, a major trophy. And yeah. the fact that they beat Lock All, a, a local derby, um, at their ground, um, for me, it, it's right up there with anything that I've done. To be honest with you, because of what happened, with, what happened with me dad and me dad passing then as well, and him being able to be there, and like you know, I got saved two penalties in the shootout and man of the match and what have you and it was just it's something that I look back on now as much as I regretted uh, the way things ended with David McAlendon and Atlaren and not being able to do it I'm glad now that I've done that and that I was able to able to have those those two years bringing me dad to all the games and everything and yeah, yeah you know something I, I look back on with, with, with fond memories having them there yeah, definitely. The Bob Radcliffe, that's the one. Is it Boxing Day that is that played? It was meant to be. That, it was meant one. to be, yeah. But we travelled. I, I was I was at home in in uh, Dublin for Christmas, and travelled up that morning, and the bloody game was called off. Um, and it was put back then. It was put back then right till the end of the season. So it was a. Uh, it, it worked out. It worked out great because it was the last game of the last game of the season. So it was like a proper, proper cup final the week after yeah. the season finished and everything and. And it was a great way to great way to finish the season and winning it. Yeah, definitely. And then from our mile then it's that where you went to Port of Down. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. And um, it was Nile Curry was there, wasn't it? And Nile got in got in touch with me out with a kind of out of the blue and asked me again would I be interested in at, at when you're in the at the championship at that stage if if Port of Down come calling, you know, you you just it's a no-brainer. I said yes straight away. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, it was one of those ones, kind of similar to Glenavon. I just got injured halfway, 
halfway through the season and ruptured my Achilles. Yeah. Um, and that was that was that basically. I, I, and mm-hmm. then obviously Noel now got now got sacked and everything before the season was over. So I I knew then, you know, I wasn't gonna be staying at Porter down and what have you, but I didn't know, you know, I was I was forty one then, so I didn't know what I was gonna do. Yeah. Did you think then time say that you were gonna hang the gloves up or anything, or did you want to go out basically on your terms rather than an injury? Well, yes. But the when I done the when I ruptured the Achilles, it was it was horrendous. It was there was nobody mm. even it was a training night. Nobody near me and it, and out of nowhere I just hit the deck. It was like being hit with a hammer on the back of it. I actually I turned around to see who would who would clap at me. And there was literally nobody, yeah. nobody beside me, nobody near me. I was like, what has just happened to me here? I went to stand up and I, I just I couldn't even stand up. Um Jesus. But yeah, then obviously that, that 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 first week of the injury, I was like, yeah, now that's me. I've had enough. Um, mm-hmm. But I, bet I spoke to, I spoke to a physio in in Newry, uh, a guy called Frank Quinn, who had taken me through rehab before whenever I had fractured my kneecap at the Reds, and he got me back playing again a month or two quicker than what I should have been. So I gave him a quick, I gave him a call, just to. Just to say, look, I'm gonna, I've ruptured my Achilles. I'm gonna come in and get some treatment off you and what have you. And the first thing he said to me was, "When do you want to be back playing?" And that was just the, the trigger in my head. Then I went, I was thinking about giving it up. They didn't. I didn't say that to him. I was in my own head. I was, and as soon as he said that, I said, "Right, what about pre-season?" And he goes, "Right, well, that's what we're aiming for." And uh, you know, to, to time, he had me, he had me back ready to go for pre-season. Yeah, brilliant. And then, so, in terms of then, how did you get into with Harry Montgomery then? How did you get acquainted? It was Harry had spoke to me previously about going into one of, into his international squads. So I had spoke to him about previously about that, and I went and met him. Um, and I, I, it was a couple of weeks after my dad passed away. And football, you know, I was coming back from the the ruptured Achilles. My dad just passed away. I was, I, I was, I was sprawled out on the sofa. Um, mm. when when the phone the phone rang and it was, it was Harry, asked me, you know, what I was doing and what have you, and would I be interested in going down? Um, at that stage he didn't, he he hadn't, he didn't know about me dad and what have you. So I was just, I was just, you know. I said to him, I obviously told him the situation and everything, and he says, right, I'll you know, leave it with you for a couple of weeks. And I said, brilliant. And to be fair to me, he gave me the couple of weeks that I needed and got back to me. And I thought to myself, you know what? It's something completely different. It was, well, no matter, I wouldn't have been on, on my radar as in, in terms of somewhere I could go. Um, yeah. Because obviously of, of the, 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 the traveling situation and everything. But um, the more I thought about it, I was like, you know what? This could be, this could be what I need. Um, mm-hmm. And then obviously we we went and I went and met him. I met Harry at the the Armour City Hotel, and within within five minutes of speaking with him, I was like, yeah, all right, go on, I'm 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 signing. I didn't tell him that. Uh, you know, the the next day or the day after when I when I told him, yeah, all right, but yeah, no, after after five minutes, you no, know, the meeting went, the conversation went on for another good hour, hour and twenty minutes. If if you know Harry, like. It'll be conversation like so. But after five yeah. minutes ago, I knew, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sign him. An hour and twenty minutes, I'm looking at me watch. I said, I'm gonna just hold him after five minutes. Yeah, I'll sign. Um, uh, done the job. Yeah, but, but Dan, brilliant. Man. I have there's a, a good few lads that I know who speak very highly of him. Like they, they say he's fantastic. Like through the, the junior setups and things like that, that they've been a part of. They couldn't speak highly enough of him. Yeah, no, absolutely. Okay. I, I, I don't even, know, I wouldn't even know where to start in terms of the the praise that he that he deserves. But he, I, the one, the one thing I always say, he, he treats you like, he treats you like a, like an adult. You know, some, sometimes in, in football you don't, you know, managers don't, don't treat you like an yeah. adult. You know the the, the way he, but Harry knows what way to talk to you and what what buttons to to, to push and he demands. Demands an awful lot out of you um, without you even knowing it at times. 
you know, in terms of uh, the expectations he, he, he puts on you and everything. But he, as a as a man and as a manager, he, he's brilliant and he's been brilliant with me. Like I, I couldn't speak highly enough of him. Mm-hmm. And in terms of for the Irish Cup, then again for yourself another big run in the Irish Cup, get yourselves to another final. Yeah, I think to be honest, I think that's a that that Irish Cup runs a fairy tale. To be honest, that was yeah, that, that was that was brilliant. Nobody nobody thought we could get past probably past the quarterfinals at Dungan and never mind get to the get to the final. Um, or even even probably the round before that when we played Carrick, they were right. they were they were favourites probably going into that one. Um, yeah. And and you know we obviously we beat them and then you get drawn against Dungan and and again I would have, everybody would have been saying oh Premiership team at, at home uh, against the Championship so they'll you know everybody would have probably backed Dungan and uh, yeah. a, what a what a what a run to the cup final we had definitely some run for yourself too good few penalty saves along the way uh, yeah no it was it was good yeah. Um, there's no, there's no, no pressure on the, on the goalkeeper when it gets to that stage, like you know. So we we're just, just lucky that. Yeah. See for the like, keepers in the Irish league, because you see a lot of the. Like, I it's just wonder this actually when I was talking to you. Like, you see a lot on TV and not in the talk about keepers always done homework on people hitting shots or people hitting penalties to go left, right this year. For an Irish league keeper, you, surely you can't be doing that type of homework or sure, changes all that so often or not as much media coverage and things. So it's just your own gut instinct, is it? Um it, well you you do, you get I got a lot of, I got information on uh penalty the penalty takers. But you mm-hmm. you're, you're kinda of getting information on the regular penalty taker. So yeah. when it goes to the when it goes to the shootout then it's obviously a kind of a, it's a different situation but um, you've just got to probably for me probably through experience and 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 that now I, I kind of have a routine of what, watching the watching the way they are and watching them maybe putting the ball in a spot and and certain things that I do myself to try and help me um, mm-hmm. and look again look look lucky enough you go the right way and you and you get a get a hand on it or whatever and and say but you know. Mm-hmm. No, so in terms of obviously you, you touched on it, you've put out Dungannon. When you seen the draw of Warren Point, we just go and we've got a real chance here. Yeah, absolutely. And I I've, I've no doubt that's exactly the, what they would have said as well. They were when, thinking, the draw, yeah. when the draw was made, it was the it was the ideal draw for both clubs really. Um we yeah, now we were obviously we were really confident then at that stage that we could that we could get the get the job done and and what have you and I think that that they, they, that game itself, there wasn't really an awful lot of clear cut chances in it, um, and I think them once I got the got the extra time, I think nearly both teams nearly kind of I wouldn't say settled for penalties, but you need you kind of knew right you don't want to lose it now in extra time, you know, so you don't want to take those extra risks and that, yeah. um, and obviously then just be confident when it goes to penalties that we can. Come out the other end of it again. Mm-hmm. And then when you do get to the final and things like that, it must be some day for the club itself, like them, or build up even for that must be incredible for any club, even I'd say the top six of the, the Irish Cup League to get into the Irish Cup final, never mind championship or not. Yeah, now the uh, you know to get to a get to an Irish Cup final, you know, the the build up and all is brilliant, and all the all the coverage it gets and. Obviously, all the you know, I can I use the, the razzmatazz of getting your getting your cup final suits and everything and all yeah. that kind of stuff. It is, it is great. And the one thing I kind of said because we the, we were a lot of young players in the in the squad at Balnamala, I kept saying them just just embrace all of it and, and enjoy it um, and make the most out of the whole kind of the whole build up to it and and everything you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, now as as I said, it was a. It was a dream to to get to the get to the cup final with with Balnamalar and and then obviously especially at especially at my age like yeah <laughs> no definitely but some 
some achievement, as you say, it's just Crusaders just far too strong, weren't they really? They're good, good side, like. Yeah. Now nah, again, you know, a team, a team that used to, a team that used to used to being there and used to used to winning and and, and playing on the really the really big occasion, you know. Um, and they 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 have got that that knack about them about winning really big games, you know. Um, and then obviously they they've got not only that they've got some really good players as well, like you know, um, you know big big arms up front, a handful for. For any team, you know, um, yeah, but you know we, we we can still be still be very proud of the, of the fact that we got the we got Ballon to the to the cup final. You know, put them, put yes, them on the map. Yeah. And um, terms for yourselves going forward, then it's going to be the championship. That just seems to get tougher and tougher. But is the aims for promotion then, or? Yeah, no, it has to be. Yeah, because you know we were. But we were we were fully confident that we could have we, we could have got promoted. Yeah. The season just gone out and um you know we did we were six points behind Porter down with a game in hand and we had to we would have had to play them again at, at Fernie Park and everything and once the once the split happened. So you know, we, we were confident that we could have at least finished second, but we were we were confident that we could have caught them and everything, but you know, that's we can't we can't Sit back and kind of say much about that. You know that, that that's a situation that nobody. Yeah, it's just. Um, see, yeah, just sort of have to knock pills and go on with it, don't you? Yeah, go exactly. And it has to be. Yeah. We have to. We have to use it now as a as motivation for next season, and, or well, the season coming, whenever that may be. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and try and get promoted, but it's not going to be. It's not going to be easy. I'm, I'm, you're sitting and you're watching. You're watching a, a lot of the teams in the championships are are uh, are strengthening it already, you know. So it's gonna be a it's gonna be a, a tough old slog no matter what. Yeah, um, I watched a few good, well, a lot of the games in the championship. Like it, it's good standard of the league, that, but it's tough to get out. of It seems to be it's just always like there last year you put it down yourselves, and then the year before you had Lauren. Yeah, I think the guys there's always seemed to be bigger teams and bigger teams getting into it every year too, doesn't it? Yeah. I think as well. I don't think it, a lot of people from the outside will not give it the championship probably the credit that it deserves. There's a lot, a lot of good players in it as well, and it's not like maybe a few years ago where it was get the ball back, uh, get the ball from front to back as quick as possible. There's a lot of teams play football in it, and you know, obviously we're we we're, we're one of the ones that do do play a lot a lot of football and take, you know play a lot of good football as well. But there's there's other teams in it now as well that do do try and play, and it is a good league. And, a, and yeah. a top league as well. Definitely. But John, just going to move on to find a few questions here for you, just on the career thing as a whole, just more lighthearted than anything. But just to start it off, the toughest centre forward you've had to play against? Um, I probably there's been a few to be fair. You probably look at the one Peter Thompson and, and Ferguson at the Blues were yeah. a were a great combination. Um, and obviously then you big big Vinnie Harkins was a he was a, a, mm. a cracking player at Porter Down as well, you know. So probably go with him. Yeah. Right. Oh, um, oh, do you know what? Gary Hamilton as well. Fair nah, he's class. Better, better not forget Gary. <laughs> uh, class act. Um, terms of, you've been around many a change room. What would you say is the funniest thing you've seen out of teammates or in any change room? Um, oh, God. I don't know. Do you know what? It's probably something that Aaron Smith probably done at Cliftonville. He was always anybody that knows knows ours or knows what I'm talking about. You know, um, crazy, crazy fella. But again, a great fella. I remember one one of the funniest things actually. I seen him tackling on the halfway line with his head one day. That's probably one of the funniest things I've seen at away to Dungannon. He tackled. He literally tackled somebody with his head, um, knocked out, and and then wanted to get up and play on. But great, great lad as well. But yeah, probably, probably yeah. him. He's he was he was a bit mad already. Uh, maybe lead on to the next question. The maddest teammate that you've had then the change room. Uh, there's been ooh, there's been a few, and most of them, to be honest, have been at Cliftonville. Um, <laughs> there was there's a a few few crazy people there. But do you know what? To be honest with you, some of them will probably say me. 
when I was there as well, I could have been a bit a bit mad in terms of uh, hot headedness and all that. Um, but thankfully, I've calmed down a bit now in the old age. Um, <laughs> but again, yeah, I'll probably, I'll probably, yeah, I'll probably give that to Aaron Smith, Kieran Caldwell as well. There's a few, few crazy, crazy lads, and I was the younger lads come up as well. Um, yeah. And they were looking up to the likes of Barry Johnson, so they could only go one way. <laughs> he a bit of a rocket too, was he? Yeah. But uh, <laughs> again, one of those, you know, a good right, he was a great lad. Like, um, mm-hmm. But you know, there was, Cliff was full of them, to be honest with you. Yeah. You had to be a rocket to survive with them, really. I know, yeah. <laughs> but John, that'll do us there, mate. So thank you very much for coming on. Uh, no, yeah. no problem at all. Uh, appreciate it. your t- taking your time up there for us.